that. With me now is Ryan Shorthouse, who's the chief executive of the Liberal Conservative think tank, Bright Blue. Look, thank you. Explain this to us, because there is more to this than meets the eyes, about a universal basic income trial, which is not essentially just money for nothing. Is it a study in how people will spend this money and whether or not it's the right thing for the government to do? Talk me through it. Well, there's lots of countries that have been trialling this universal basic income. Scotland has had a trial recently. Wales is undergoing a trial. Finland did one about four or five years ago. And the government, after seeing that trial, concluded that they wouldn't proceed with introducing it. But basically, it's the idea that everybody gets uh, an unconditional flat rate amount. Uh, so you don't have bureaucracy in the welfare system. So people don't have to engage with job centres or certain rules for getting benefits from, from the government. Uh, and lots of people have advocated this, including a lot of people who were worried about the impact of automation on, on jobs. Mm. And so there's feeling that if everybody had this basic high minimum, um, they wouldn't have to go through all the sort of complexity and stress involved with uh, getting a, an adequate amount of but, money to with, 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 res um, with respect also, sorry, I mean, would they also have to bother to get a job? I mean, this is part of it, isn't it? Well, the idea is that everybody, it's universal, so everyone would be entitled to it. So it would reduce the stigma uh, associated with claiming benefits. Um, I, I mean, I personally, I'm against it. I, I don't think it's a, a good use of taxpayers' money. I mean, basically, if you're going to give everybody an adequate amount of money to live on, considering a lot of people have, for example, lots of children or they may have disability, the rate would have to be so high. So, for example, if everyone received the 1,600 um, uh, that the people are in this trial at the moment, we'd be talking about trillions of pounds uh, of taxpayers' money to, to pay for this sort of thing. So I don't think that's a good use of money. I mean, the alternative is that it's such a low rate to become more affordable that it yeah. doesn't really cover the living expenses of people oh, with more complex needs. Is it not? Is, is, the, is the reality of the situation... At the end of the day... Yeah, it, it, is the reality of the situation that people are, are so terrified that we have quite literally created our own downfall with AI, that loads of jobs are going to be taken, and that the whole future of capitalism rests upon this? Because if people are out of work because of AI, then they can't buy things like iPhones, which means that companies go bust. So if you just chuck them 1,600 quid a month, they can still do stuff with their money, and society as we know it functions. Well, that's a sort of very conspiratorial uh, sort of view of why, why no. people are advocating it. But, <laughs> Sorry. I, I mean, I think there is a genuine sort of... I think there is a genuine case for, you know, to, for supporting people and having less complexity and bureaucracy and stigma. But as I say, I just think at the end of the day, it wouldn't be good use of taxpayers' money. I think what is more effective is making sure that people who have higher needs get the support that they need. And also, we support people okay. into work. The thing about universal basic income is that it may not really be an incentive for people on very, in very vulnerable circumstances to work. And I yeah. believe that work is fundamentally good for people, not in terms yeah. of their, not just in terms of their finances, but also their mental health as well. Okay. Uh, and I think there's a danger that if you set the UBI rate too high, that it would disincentivize employment. And I don't think that is materially or psychologically good. A hundred percent. Ryan, thank you very much. It's great to have you on. And um, uh, apologies for apparently serving up some kind of uh, conspiratorial claptrap there. But I've got to be honest with you, that was just my initial hot take on the situation. Uh, Ryan Shorthouse there is the uh, chief executive of the Liberal Conservative think tank Bright Blue.